Welcome to the All in One channel. I'm Kelly Rosano, and this is Gemini, October 2013. Gemini, your ruling planet makes its last turn uh, retrograde of 2013. On um, October 21st, Mercury retrogrades in Scorpio at 18 degrees and will go direct on November 10th at 2 degrees Scorpio. I like Mercury being in Scorpio, given all that's happening in October and November with your ruling planet in Scorpio. It will empower you to um, zone in on what matters, what's important, cut through the superficial, cut through uh, the lies and deception, the games people are playing. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on in October. And with Mercury in Scorpio, you'll be able to get to the heart of the matter and focus on, okay, this is what I need to do. This is what is important. And I'm not going to uh, pay attention to all these other distractions going on. So it will empower you. And Mercury retrograde is important because we need this time to go back over things. And the reason is because on October 4th, we have an incredibly powerful Libra new moon. And this may be the most powerful and intense new moon of 2013. And the reason is because the sun and the moon are exactly conjunct at 12 degrees Libra. And they're forming a grand square with powerful Pluto, outrageous Uranus, and expansive Jupiter. So this is going to be one heck of a new moon. Now, if you feel like people aren't appreciating you in um, October because of the zany energy that's going on, this energy is affecting everybody, especially the Libras, the Aries, the Capricorns, and Cancers. And if you find that they're not appreciating you, then you appreciate you. You love you. Throw yourself a party. Celebrate yourself celebrate your life because others may be so caught up in their own storm, their own drama that they're not appreciating you. And, and so it's very important that you're taking good care of you and you treat yourself to a healthy dose of self-love, self-appreciation, and you'll keep being that shining star that we need you to be. Cause this is going to kind of be a rocktober if we've ever seen one. This Libra new moon, I mean, <laughs> I could spend three hours just talking about it, but I don't want the podcast to be that gigantic long that you have to come back for part one, two, and three. So for you, you know, Libra is a sister sign, which is very beneficial. So for you, you're not experiencing this as bad as uh, some of the other folks, uh, you know, but we're all in this together, so it does affect all of us. Um, it's happening in the fifth house of true love for you and romance and creative uh, self-expression, freedom, risk-taking, uh, self-confidence. And so, you know, for you, it's going to harmonize with all your Gemini planets, your sun in Gemini, your ascendant Gemini, your moon Gemini. Uh, so the sun and the moon are rocking you in a very positive way. Problem is, um, Pluto and Uranus are getting ready for their fourth exact square on November 1st. So this new moon is building to the Rock and Sockham robots, Darth Vader, Big Bad Wolf, wah, on November 1st. And this is the fourth of seven exact squares with Pluto and Uranus that is going to continue through 2015, affecting all of us. Now, Pluto for you is in the eighth house of six. And Uranus is in the area of your goals and your friends. And so that's why you may be feeling like, um, uh, you know, others are being weird and strange and, you know, you just, you just don't want to deal with them. So don't, um, you know, just ride the wave. You know, Pluto and Uranus are breaking things down that are no longer working. But if you are the change agent of your life, then you're just riding the wave. You're just going with the flow. But if you're not making those changes, then the universe comes in and changes us. And that's when it's harsh. But to avoid that, be the change agent. Take charge of your life and make those changes. And many of you have already done that. And so it will get better because you've already taken action to change things and um, 
what Uranus wants to do is liberate you from the past so that you're living your authentic self. You're doing what you came here to do. So yes, major ch life change is upon you, um, but it is for your highest good, and that's what you want to remember. Now, Venus and Mars are also squaring at the time of this uh, Libra new moon. And this is happening for you in the area of uh, work as well as your day-to-day -day life. So, you know, again, if you're not feeling the love from others, you love you. You love you more than the need for them to love you. And it, this will empower you. And you'll be singing your song right through October and, you know, right into November and, and feeling great and feeling in charge. And that is, you know, the best strategy for this energy because we have no control over what others do. We have no control of what goes on in the world. Our power is in what you do, what you choose to do. And that's awesome because if you are taking care of yourself and you're loving yourself and you're doing what's right for you, you're going to find this energy liberating. You're going to find this energy is making breakthroughs for you, that you are breaking through. You know, squares and oppositions, you know, there's always a higher and lower manifestation to everything. And the higher manifestation is being the change agent. And when you do that, you'll find that the resources are there, the connections are there, the opportunities are there, and that things are going your way. And so you can use this energy to, um, you know, be in your life path destiny, be in your dharma, be in what you've come here to do. And that's where you're going to find your greatest happiness and joy. Now, Venus enters Sagittarius on October 7th. And that's love for you, okay? So your marriage and partnership relationship area is heating up um, October 7th. And this is really strong. So um, any planets going into Sagittarius um, really starts to bring the love factor into your life. So you could find, um, you know, relationship coming your way. You could find that if you're in a relationship, it gets better. It improves. And that um, your desire for travel and adventure will get stronger too. Mars enters Virgo on the 15th. And um, <clears throat> this is your foundation. So you could be working around the home, making your home better, making your home more comfortable. And isn't home a great place to be these days? <laughs> Hanging out at home is like really awesome, uh, especially when it gets crazy out there. You know, it's like, I'm just going to go home and hang out. And so you may want to take your lover home or your partner, and you may just want to stay home and, and uh, throw a party, have fun. Now, on um, October 18th, we have an amazing Aries lunar eclipse. And this is happening for you in the fun houses. Now, I like this eclipse because Pluto and Uranus are not touching it. Jupiter is squaring it, but Jupiter doesn't hurt anything. The challenge with Jupiter squares is we can overextend ourselves. We can overcommit ourselves. Oh, I can do that, and I can do that, and I can do that. And then it's like, oh, no, why did I say I could do that and that and that? I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't do any of that. I, uh, and that's the challenge. But it feels really good. Jupiter squares feel awesome. Uh, anything Jupiter touches, it feels good. So Jupiter um, uh, is squaring uh, the Aries lunar eclipse and the sun in Libra. Now, this could, for those of you that are single and looking for love, this could bring love in because eclipses are major endings and beginnings. So if you haven't been in a relationship, this can bring a relationship because this is in the love houses for you, especially uh, with Sagi uh, being activated by the goddess of love, Venus, uh, in your seventh. And now with this uh, uh, fun lunar eclipse, and we need this energy. This will lighten things up from the, uh, the uh, Libra new moon. Um, and so I really like this. Now Mars, the challenge though with Mars is, uh, Mars is ruling the, the lunar eclipse because Aries is ruled by Mars and Mars just went into Virgo and anytime a planet goes into early degree Virgo, first thing it hits is Neptune. 
And so um, it's okay to take your time in any decisions, unless you absolutely have to make a decision. Because with Mars opposing nebulous Neptune, we don't know where anything's going. We don't. We don't know. It's like we can look down the road and all we see is fog. We can't see two feet in front of us. So wait a few days. There's nothing wrong with waiting a few days. But then Mercury goes retrograde on the 21st. So I really think if we're going to make any major decisions, if you're going to make any major decisions, do it um, before the 21st. So the first three weeks of October, yes, make decisions. Uh, you know, if you've got to make a, a major decision, uh, you're thinking of moving, um, you know, you're thinking of committing yourself into a relationship, um, fine, go for it, do it. Whatever it is you're thinking of doing, taking a new job, relocating, do it before the 21st. After the 21st, hang loose because we got Mercury retrograde till the 10th, we've got the second eclipse come in uh, November 3rd, and Pluto and Uranus are squaring on the first. So we all need to stay clear of everything till at least, you know, the 11th of November. I'll be back early in October to talk about November. Um, so, so use this um, Aries lunar eclipse to have fun, throw a party. Okay, it's happening in the fun houses with you. Uh, Libra is five signs from you and it rules your creative love, creative risk taking, creative expansion, being creative in every direction. Heck, we can be creative making a sandwich. Creativity is just how you do it your own way, your authentic way, you know? And, um, and Aries is 11 signs from you and it rules your friends, your networking, your goals, being lucky. Jupiter is in the area of uh, wealth building for you. And so, you know, magic can happen here. Magic can happen for you. And um, then uh, the sun enters uh, Scorpio on the 23rd. And for you, this has more to do with your lifestyle and your health and your health habits and your work habits. And um, Mercury will, your ruling planet will conjunct Saturn on the 29th here. So this is uh, important because you'll probably be making some sort of big decision then around that time at the end of the month, um, around the 29th in regards to your work. And this could be good. You may have this breakthrough at the Aries lunar eclipse, like, okay, or even the, the new moon. Again, there's always a higher manifestation to these aspects. Squares aren't always bad. And so you may like get a new job opportunity or a new idea to start a business or a new idea to grow your business. Um, and that's very good. That's very positive. I'm just saying wait till after the 11th of November before you take action with it. Mercury retrograde is an awesome time to strategize and rethink things and go over things. And the link is below to my website. You can go there and read how to navigate Mercury retrograde. It's got some good information there for you. So this can be a good time for you to do that. Um, but October is a time to stay fluid and focus on what truly matters for you and really focus on what you want and what you want in relationships. Love is really strong for you in October. Uh, Venus is in the area of marriage and partnership. Your uh, area of true love and romance is on fire. Um, you know, a friend could become a lover. Lovers and friends is a big theme with you in um, October. Money is good. Jupiter is moving through the wealth building area. The more you network, the more you put your incredible ideas out there, the more you're going to receive new clients, new customers, new job opportunities, new partnerships, new networking. And after the 11th, sign the contract of November. Sign the deal, merge, marry, do whatever you want to do. It will be time for you to take action. Be the change agent of your life. That's the message of October. If you are the change agent, then the universe doesn't have to force change on you. And, you know, just think what's for my highest good? What's for the highest good of all here? And you'll be on track. You'll be doing what's right for you. Treat yourself really well in October. If you're feeling like, hey, they're not appreciating me, you appreciate you. You throw you a party. You got a lot to celebrate. You got a lot to look forward to. Um, 
Yeah, I see money strong. I see love is off the charts. Uh, you're spiritually growing at the same time too. It is a wonderful time to be open to the creative change that's taking place in your life. This is going to uh, give you more creative self-expression and freedom and liberation from the past. And that's what this is all about. That's what the Pluto Uranus is doing for all of us, is liberating us so that we are freer and have more opportunity to be our authentic selves. I really like October for you. You're going to do well. You're going to navigate this well. If you're loving on yourself, you're appreciating yourself, and staying in your creative power is really strong for you. Just go into your creative power and watch what you manifest. It will be incredible. And have fun with your relationships. It looks really hot. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for liking, sharing, and favoring my podcast. You totally rock. Thank you for subscribing, Gemini. You're so awesome. And until next time. All you people, can't you see, can't you see how your love's affecting our reality? Every time we're down, you can make it right. And that makes you larger than life. Yeah, and that makes you larger than life. Yeah.